For a few years, I've been following along with an incredible scientific discovery happening on the Atlantic coast of Florida. I've always had a love for a group of animals called elasmobranchs, which include sharks and their cousins, the batoids, who you probably better know as stingrays. And there's one kind of ray I absolutely love getting to see in the wild, the biggest one of them all, the manta ray. Mantas have been sighted occasionally off of Florida for years, but Everyone thought that they were just another tourist to our warm, shallow coastline before heading out to the open ocean. Everyone except for my fellow marine biologist, Jessica Pate. Jessica runs the Florida Manta Project, and since 2016, her team has been studying what just might be a resident population of manta rays living along Florida's Atlantic coast. I had to see this for myself, so Jessica invited me out on the water to join her team. The basic plan is to get out along the coast with a boat and launch a drone. Jessica will fly the drone in one direction, and the boat will follow after it. If Jessica spots a manta, we record its behaviors, position, and if possible, a diver will attempt to swim under the manta to get an ID. The team can ID each manta ray by getting a clear video of its underside. Mantas can be accurately identified by the spot patterns on their belly, and Jessica's team uses this to create a catalog of all the mantas that visit Florida. It's kind of like Facebook, but for fish. You might be wondering who would be crazy enough to jump into open water and swim up to an ocean giant for an ID. Well, today it's me, and I'll be jumping in alongside one of the team's researchers, Vicky, to try to get an identifying shot of any mantas we might find. But before we jump in, we've got a few other tasks to do. As we head out onto the water, the team readies a plankton net. Part of Jessica's research involves figuring out what the mantas are eating. Manta rays are filter feeders, just like whales, so the team uses the net to figure out what's on the menu for them. After dragging the net behind the boat, we pull it out to rinse off and collect any zooplankton caught. These zooplankton are tiny animals like copepods, amphipods, and crustaceans. Individually, they don't amount to much, but when you're a filter feeder, you can screen out hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of these tiny animals every day for a full meal. Researching any kind of wildlife is difficult. It requires careful planning and consistent results. Jessica noticed the mantas seem to be moving up and down Florida's coastal waters. So like any good scientist, she formed a hypothesis, wrote up proposals, and got the funding she needed to gather data about our mysterious mantas. Her team doesn't find a manta ray every time. I actually went out with her team four different times and we only found one manta. But we did find lots of other things, like dolphins, sharks, sea turtles, and other kinds of rays like eagle rays. Because of these visual sightings, Jessica works with a variety of other research organizations to contribute to their information and share. This kind of collaboration is what helps everyone involved working towards a better future for the ocean. Okay, so we've sampled the plankton. It's time to launch the drone and start hunting for manta rays. Jessica dons her high-tech manta blanket so she can see the screen of her drone controller instead of the glare of our bright Florida sun and the drone races up the coast and the boat chases after it. What we see using this drone chasing method is nothing short of incredible. take time to admire the amazing scenery and wildlife. Not many people get to see nature up close like this. But after appreciating some of our encounters, it's time for the battery to be changed. Flying the drone like this really drains the battery, so before long we have to change it again. And again. And again. But all of the patience is worth it when Jessica finally finds what we're looking for. She's spotted a manta nearby. Vicky and I have to act quickly to even have a chance at an ID. We put on our dive gear and wait for the signal. Jessica positions the drone over the manta so we know which direction to swim in. The boat is thrown into neutral and we jump in. 
The water isn't super clear, and I can't see more than 10 feet in front of me. Sticking my head up out of the water and spotting the drone is my only clue to know where the manta is. I keep going. And then out of the green, it appears, swimming straight at me. The manta quickly banks to its side, and I kick as hard as I can to keep up. But unfortunately for me, I'm just a little too slow for this fish. Though I'm left treading water as I head back to the boat, I feel so excited. I just met a wild manta. And using the images Vicky was able to get, this manta is identified as number 103. This is the first time this manta has been spotted by the team, and I am absolutely thrilled. As we head back to the docks to go home, I'm left inspired by these gentle giants and ready to come back out and look for more. The research that Jessica and her team at the Florida Manta Project is doing is crucial to understanding these mantas and to better learn their lives and how we can coexist with them. Learning and understanding how humans affect them is critical to protecting these amazing animals. So, I'm Zach Cole, this is the Manta Ray, and thanks for checking out what makes Florida so wild. I want to give a huge shout out to Jessica and her team at the Florida Manta Project. All of the drone footage you saw was provided by her and made this episode of Wild Florida possible. Thank you so much for the footage and inviting me out with your team, Jessica. There's a link to the Florida Manta Project down in the description. Make sure to check them out and subscribe to the channel and give this video a share. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.